All right, everybody, welcome back into Cherry Picking. Today's video, we're going to be looking at a little bit more in-depth draft strategy for the picks from one to four. So obviously, we had the first full mock draft. I picked from the third position, went with Austin Matthews first. So we'll give you a little bit of a different look this time. I'm going to be drafting at the number one spot. But first, we're going to be talking about the strategy of if you have a pick or if you are picking from the first, second, third, or fourth spot uh, to start off your drafts, kind of what you want to do with your forwards, what you want to do with your defensemen, what you want to do with goalies, how to line up, and then we'll see it kind of live in action uh, when we do another mock draft here in about five minutes. So looking at the forward strategy here, it's pretty straightforward. If you have the first overall pick, you're obviously taking Connor McDavid. If you have the second overall pick, it's more, more or less going to be Leon Dreisettle. Um, or maybe Nathan McKinnon, and if not, you're going to take him at the third spot. I took Matthews there. I think he's probably uh, a top three center in fantasy hockey this year just because last year I think was a little bit of a down year. If you look at his stats, uh, he led the NHL in expected goals four and five on five play last year. I think that's huge for fantasy hockey because I think the Leafs power play is going to be really good as well. But at that four spot, you know, leaves it up for a little bit more ambiguity. If you're playing in a bangers league, maybe you want to take one of the Kachuk brothers. I think that's fine. The biggest thing for me is you'll most you'll most likely take a center uh, with that first pick. And if you take a center with that first pick, your second round pick is most likely going to have to be um, either a winger or a defenseman with how things kind of line up. So if you're doing that, um, you know, you kind of set yourself up for a little bit more freedom later on in the draft. If you have one center and one winger, obviously you have a few more winger spots to fill up there with two right wingers and two left wing spots. So I would definitely suggest taking a winger. In my last mock draft, I went uh, Matthews and Crosby first two and then just really just went hard on wingers um, for the next few rounds after securing a couple more defensemen. My goalies were lacking a little bit, so that's obviously you're gonna your strategy has to make sure you're kind of being more uh, consistent through all those different positions. Um, but a good winger that you can maybe take, and we'll look at it in the second round there, is Timo Meyer. Uh, he's going around that you know second or third spot, depending on where you're, um, which of those top four picks that you have. But talking about defensemen here. Um, you won't be getting in the, those first four picks unless you want to take McCarr at four. I don't think I really would. You won't be getting Kale McCarr. Fox, certainly an option. So is Roman Yossi and Rasmus Dahlin as your second round pick or even third round pick because obviously they're going to be close close to back to back together there. You just don't want to make sure you miss out on any of those guys. But picking up a defenseman in the second or third round will be really key. And then going after that, you can pick up a guy like maybe Miro Heiskin or or Quinn Hughes in the fourth or fifth round and then kind of pick up those depth defensemen a little bit later on. Um, and if you go with a guy like, let's say, Adam Fox and Quinn Hughes, you're going to want a guy who maybe gets a little bit more hits, maybe blocks a few more shots later on in the round. You know, looking at someone like Condre Miller later on in the, in the draft, you know, not a bad idea. Maybe Noah Dobson, a good option later there as well. And then goalies. When you're drafting from the one to four spot, you're probably going to miss out on Ilya Sorokin or Igor Shosturkin um, from just my experiences here. So if you do miss off on those, I would hold off from a goalie until about round five or six. Maybe you got to get a guy like Yusei Saros, Philip Gustafson. I'm not sold on Jay Gottinger if you're taking him on the third, the second or third round there, um, making it your second pick, really. I don't think that's really the best move. I think getting a defenseman that is going to get you at least 60 to 70 points is way more valuable than having a guy like Jake Ottinger, who was really shaky at the end of last year, to be honest. And then there's also guys like Connor Hellebuck that are going around there, Alex, Alexander Yorgiev. Now, if your league settings have wins set really high... Alexander Yorgiev is probably a pretty good pick. Obviously, Colorado is supposed to be one of the best teams in the NHL, like they were in the past couple years. But if you wait until the fifth or sixth round, you could definitely look at getting a guy like Philip Gustafson, uh, Yusei Saros, maybe even Bobrovsky, Freddie Anderson. There's a lot of options um, that you can get later on. So those first few rounds, I'm thinking center, winger, and defenseman. And then you can try and get a goalie in the fourth round if you want, or take another defenseman in the fourth round. You know there's obviously less valuable defensemen to take early on compared to later on. And then, you know, you keep going with wingers because centers, there's a lot of centers that you can take kind of at the near end of your draft that are even first-line, second-line centers that will be playing 16 to 18 minutes a game. So um, those are the options there. That's kind of the strategy I'm going to be going over. But let's see kind of what happens when I take the first overall pick, go with Connor McDavid first overall, and then how you build your team around him. All right, so here we go. Drafting from the one hole here, obviously going to be taking Connor McDavid, but if you have those picks from one to four, um, you're looking at McDavid, Dreisaitl, like I mentioned, Austin Matthews, I think is an option in the top three as well, Nathan McKinnon. And then if you're looking, if you want to have a winger um, in one of these first picks, so you have a little bit more freedom to take a center as your second pick, because there's guys like Crosby that'll be around for sure. Um, Matt Kachuk or even Brady Kachuk like I know you might think because you're looking at the Yahoo rankings you're reaching on him 
But the guy had 250 hits or something last year. Almost, I think he was fourth in the NHL in shots. He was top five in expected goals for. Actually, no, sorry, he led the NHL in expected goals for um, with about like 50 and only finished with 35 actual goals. So I feel like he's. this is going to be his season, and he has all the talent in the world around him as well. So taking him at four, I don't hate it as, at all. Um, when I do these picks from five to eight and then eight to 12 as well, or nine to 12, you'll kind of see um, where Kachuk is going in those spots as well. And if you're getting him at the tail end of your draft, like you're, you're absolutely set up uh, for success there. So um, 30 more seconds here until I obviously draft Connor McDavid first overall. Um, guys that I've seen kind of fall to me in this window when looking at when drafting from the one to four slot, wingers in the second round, William Nylander's an option there. Um, Nugent Hopkins is flying around. He has that duality of playing center and left wing. I'm not really high on Nuge this year. 53 power play points. I can't see him recreating that again this season, especially with all the other bodies that might have a little bit more of opportunity on this power play as well with Jay Woodcroft's group. So um, I'd much rather look at other players that aren't relying solely on power play points. So here we go, Connor. McDavid, first overall. Interested to see kind of what the rest of this group here does, but it's probably going to be dry settle Pastor Nack McKinnon, Matt Kachuk. I don't think you're going to te- see too much variance. So what I'm going to try to do for sure, um, if you guys watched the full first mock draft that I did, I drafted from the third spot. I took Adam Fox there. Saw a lot of you guys talking about um, Adam Fox and Roman Yossi. Who, who should you take first? And a lot of people are like, taking Adam Fox before Roman Yossi is just crazy. And I don't really see it that way, to be honest. I think Adam Fox is in in a position in his career to even have another fantastic season. Maybe this is the year we see him with 80-plus points. We've seen Peter Laviolette be able to activate his defenseman in the best possible way. Look at when he was in Nashville. Even when he was in Philadelphia, look at a guy like Kimo Tiemann and had some of his best years there. You look at last season with Washington, Eric Gustafson had, I think, uh, 40 points or 50 points in like 60 games with the Washington Capitals last year. I think it was 40 points, just just under 40 points um, with the Washington Capitals last year before being moved to the Toronto Maple Leafs. And that's a 31, 32-year-old who's past his prime, used to play for Chicago. Um, and I know John Carlson was out, but still, obviously, it's very clear Laviolette runs his offense a lot through his defensemen. So the Rangers defenseman I'm going to be looking at, 100% Adam Fox early on. And then also Condre Miller as well. I think Condre Miller will be a really good spot here. Um, see where these guys went. So obviously we saw McDavid. I took McDavid first. And then Drysdale, Pasternak, Austin Matthews, fourth overall. So it's not really that crazy. We're seeing Matthews go a lot earlier than what you're seeing on Yahoo here right now. Um, McKinnon, Kachuk, Jack Hughes, Miko Ranin, Kucherov. Not totally surprising to see Jason Robertson still around there. Um, when we do those other videos where I'm looking at draft picks a little bit later on, he's not going to be a guy I'm really going to be taking. I think even in that eight to nine to 12 range or even five to eight range, I think there's much better players and much better options that you can look at. Another guy who I think played a little bit over his skills last year, obviously had a great season, but I just can't see this, this group on Dallas recreating the exact same uh, sort of efficiency presence on the power play that they did. And even in the offensive zone. So we'll see. So as I mentioned, when, before we started the mock draft, it's going to be hard for you to get Igor Shosturkin or Ilya Sorokin drafting where you're drafting um, in those first four spots. Even if you have the fourth overall pick, you know, you'll have um, the 21st pick coming back around Sorokin right around that 1918 mark. I will be shocked if he if either of those goalies are around when I'm there. I'm going to be looking at a defenseman and a winger again. So I'll be looking at either Nylander or Adam Fox at this point. Roman Yossi, also a good option. Rasmus Dahlin, also a great option as well. I just think Adam Fox is in a really good position here. We've seen him score 70-plus points consistently. Obviously, Yossi has done the same over the past couple of years. He had that 100-point season um, when Makar won the uh, won the Norris as well. So we'll be it'll be interesting to see kind of where these guys end up um, as this draft continues here. So there goes Kaprizov, Ovechkin. So as I mentioned, like Crosby's probably still going to be there when it comes to my turn. Um, not that I'll be shocked if he gets taken, but, um, okay, so there goes Ilya Sorokin. Igor Shosturkin probably going up here next. I'll be quite surprised if not. And look, I will say if um, William Nylander gets taken, I'm going to be looking at Timo Meyer to draft. Uh, I know a lot of you are thinking, like, oh, he's really far down that list right now. He finished second in expected goals for last year in five on five hockey, just below Austin Matthews, a guy who I think is also in a great position to succeed playing on a line with Nico Heischer. And it, Right now, it seems like Alex Holtz, but I wonder if he'll be able to hold that kind of that right wing position there. Um, 
Timo Meyer also has that left wing, right wing capability. We saw the season before he was absolutely fantastic. So there he goes three goalies. Obviously, someone auto probably auto drafted Vasilevsky. Um, he's going to be out for the first two months, so I would not take him this early. There's absolutely zero point in that. Um, if you can get him later on, sure, but I wouldn't. So I'm looking here. I'm going to be looking at Adam Fox um, and probably William Nylander. So I'm going to go with William Nylander. 40 goals last year, 47 assists. I think he's probably going to have a very similar season this year. Um, and I'm going to go with Adam Fox. So pretty solid to start. I like that start. You know, you got kind of one of each. You got a winger, you got a center, you got a D-man. And as I mentioned with the goalies, I could have taken Ottinger there who just went. I'm not totally sold on him. I don't think it's worth taking him there. There's other really good goalies that could break out just like he did last year or the year before that. Yorgiev, like, who knows with Yorgiev and this Colorado team. Obviously, he is going to get a, certainly going to get a lot of wing, wins. He had a good year last year, but Pavel Francouz is you know, still in the conversation. Is he going to be a guy that's going to be able to kind of steal a couple steal a couple wins from there if he starts playing really well? You know, does he start? Does Jared Bednar start to lean on Francouz a little bit more than Yorgiev? So, um, definitely an option there. There goes Timo Meyer, another guy that you could could look at there. So, um, this is going a lot faster here. So, in this pick here, if Darlene or Yossi are around, I will probably be taking one of them. Yossi's gone, but Darlene and Dougie Hamilton are there. So that's definitely an option. There's still some pretty solid centers as well. I mean, I do have Connor McDavid, so I definitely don't have to worry too much about centers. Nico Heischer, another guy. I mentioned Timo Meyer, and I mentioned this in our last video. Nico Heischer assisted on just three of Jack Hughes' goals last year. Like, that's crazy considering how many points, the point jump that he had. Um, 80 points. Yeah, 80 points last year. So um, that that's also an option here. I wouldn't jump on a goalie just yet. Like, looking at what goalies are here. You know, you still have Swayman, Gustafson, Saros. Taking Soros here wouldn't be a terrible option. <clears throat> so there goes Darlene. There goes Darlene. So that's kind of a that's a tough blow. But Dougie Hamilton, also a guy that pretty solid. Like last year, almost 30 power play points. Um, definitely getting a piece of this um, of this New Jersey team isn't bad call either. I don't want to jump on a center right now because there's a lot of good ones later on, and Dougie Hamilton and Soros might be my next pick here. I think taking a goalie in round five is definitely a good option. So there goes Matt Boldy, another good pick, someone I would also consider taking. I'm going to go Dougie Hamilton. I have Dougie Hamilton rated pretty high. Um, I like Dougie Hamilton here, and then I'm also going to go Soros. I know people might think um, people might think that's a little high. Soros was the best goalie in fantasy hockey last year based on just how many saves, like the volume he, he creates. And look, I don't think they're going to be moving away from Saros at any time soon. Kevin Lankanen's the backup. They tried to trade Askarov during the NHL draft this year, this big prospect that I've been talking about for two years now. Um, is supposed to be coming up, this Russian kid. But they tried to move him on, on uh, draft day to kind of move up. That didn't end up working. So they're obviously not totally sold on him where he's going to be taking um, starts away from Yusei Saros at this point. So... I like the balance part of my team right now. I think drafting in that one to four spot, you're going to see some of the defensemen, good defensemen, early on will fall kind of in your lap, and you kind of just have to see where you're going to take them. Um, definitely some other options here. Like, look, they're still now. Are they going to fall to me? Probably not. But Larkin, Heischer, uh, Malkin, but uh, Barkov all still around here. Um, wingers that I'll be kind of. So next one, I'm definitely going forward. Forwards, obviously, two forwards, a center, a center, and a winger, or two wingers. Um, next up here, so guys that probably will fall to me. Debrinket, I love Debrinket this year. I think that's a good option. Even PLD, like I know he, that guy's faced a decent amount of scrutiny, but last year still 27 goals. He's never really been in a city he's wanted to play in. Will that change in LA? It's hard to obviously tell, but I think he's in a much better position to succeed here, playing alongside Kevin Fiala too. I think we're going to see Kevin Fiala a little resurgent season, even though last year he did have 70-plus points. I think we could still see an even better season from here this year because he's not playing with Philip Deneau anymore. Philip Deneau is not an offensive center. He's a guy you put out there to shut down your top center from the other line, uh, like a guy like Connor McDavid. So um, taking Dougie Hamilton, still, I, I still think it was a good decision, but we'll see because there's still a lot of good defensemen. Like Quinn Hughes, a guy I took in my last mock, mock draft, I did really like. Um, so there goes Heischer, center. So I was just about to say Jesper Bratt would be an awesome pick here. But 
I'm looking at two wingers in this position. Like I mentioned, I wouldn't mind taking PLD there. Um, uh, oh my God, did Brinkett go? Yeah, he did. Wow, right after Dylan, or right before Dylan Larkin. <clears throat> Kevin Fiala is still a guy I would like. Now, do I want the stack of those two guys? Probably not. Looking further down here, Reinhardt's a good option too, but this is this is like this is tough because you want to take, I think, best player available when you're in this situation. There goes Kevin Fiala. God fucking damn it. Okay. Now we got a decision to make here. Do we take Jordan Cairo? Do we take Pierre Luc Dubois? Do we take Claude Giroux? A lot of decent options here. We could go we could go another D with Josh Morrissey. I think Morrissey's a good option as well. Okay. So we're gonna go we're gonna go Pierre Luc Dubois and then we're gonna go Philip Gustafson. We're gonna take another goalie. We're just gonna stack up the goalies right now. Seventh round, so not that crazy um, to be taking another goalie in. But now we have two solid starters. Gustafson, I think, could be a sleeper candidate uh, for the Vesna this year. If he fully takes over the net from Marc Andre Fleury with a really solid defense defensive unit in front of him and a team that limits a lot of chances, I think that's a great option. We saw how well he played last year. Pretty sure his goals against average would finish close to, if not under two, right at two. Um, and there's still a lot of really good options here. Hopefully, oh, they did put Pierre Luc Dubois at the center position. It's not a huge deal, but how the team's shaping up right now. Obviously, you have one center, two centers uh, counting Pierre Luc Dubois, and he has left wing ability as well. We have Nylander, Fox, Hamilton. So now we can kind of really load up on forwards, and there's a lot of good forwards coming up here. Um, none that I really wanted to reach on, but Sam Reinhardt's a guy I'm targeting for sure. Kuzmenko I took in my last draft. I think he'll be solid. Nazem Kadri also a good option here. Konechny, not obviously too too high on anybody from Philly. Wouldn't really suggest. Kreider's an interesting option, man. He had like no assists last year, but this Peter Laviolette-led team, I think is just going to be so much different than they were last season. Joel Eriksson X also a really good option. There goes Reinhardt. There goes to Foley. So now we're going, we got to go heavy. We got to go some wingers here. So I am going to go Chris Kreider, you know, the guy who does shoot a lot and gets and, and gets a decent amount of hits. Look at last year, 130 hits. So you're covering a lot of bases there, but I'm going to go with Kuzmenko. I think Kuzmenko is going to get much more opportunity this year. Everyone talks about how high his, how high his shooting percentage is last season. Obviously, it's not going to be 27% this year, but he's going to get a hell of a lot more than 143 shots on net, I would think, playing on that first line with uh, Elias Peterson and Anthony Beauvillier. So I think those are good options here. You kind of round out our forward group, to be honest, almost. We just need one more right winger, and we can look at some D as well. So I think next option or next pick, we'll be looking at some defensemen here. Some defensemen that are still on the board. There goes Huberto, another good pick, I think, as well. Um, Noah Dobson, Seth Jones, uh, Justin Falk, if you need points. Uh, I mean, we got Dougie Hamilton and Adam Fox, but Justin Falk, like, Back-to-back -back almost 50-point seasons, pretty much, over the last two seasons. Totally flying under so many players' radars. Tony D'Angelo, another guy I think you could take a little bit later on. That would be a good option, too. Um, but at this point in the draft, too, like we're heading into round 10, you take the best player available. Because if you have a lot of one position, it's really easy to trade. You know, you can't, you don't want to trade uh, kind of one for one at a position. You want to be trading someone who has a need and you have a need as well. It's obviously the best way to trade and pretty much the only way you will trade because trading in fantasy sports is very difficult, especially if you play with your friends because they always think you're trying to screw them over. Um, I might actually even snag Joel Eriksson Eck here. Um, just to, just to, there goes Justin Falk. Another good option there. So D men are going quick. I might take Eriksson Eck considering I have. So Raquel's going to be playing on that first power play so far with um, with Pittsburgh, which, and it should be very good. So I'm going to go with I'm gonna go Ricard Raquel here. Riley Smith, also a good option, but I like Raquel in that spot. And then looking at defensemen, we need another defenseman here. I'm going to go with Tony D'Angelo. I think Tony D'Angelo, back on this Carolina team, um, you know, looking at uh, uh, pretty much going to be quarterback in that first power play like he was two years ago where he had over 60 points in not a ton of games either. So I like Tony D'Angelo there and going to be in a much better situation, obviously, than playing for that Philly team. And now we will need another goalie at this point, but um, you kind of see the strategy of kind of what, what we did. If we look at our draft results and players that we took. So I have McDavid, who I took first. Then Adam Fox and Willie Nylander kind of hit all our bases there with a defenseman, a winger, and a center. 
Um, you're going to be taking a center more than likely not if you're in those first four picks. And then getting a winger is also very important early on. And then getting those defensemen shored up early is also a good idea. Um, and then from there, you know, took Dougie Hamilton, uh, went with PLD, and shored up our goalies with Yusei Saros and Philip Gustafson. And now we kind of have a little bit more freedom to take other positions here. So looking at all these players, we still need another defenseman, so we can't forget about that. I know last time at this point, oh, yeah, like I mentioned, you need someone for hits and blocks, and a guy who's probably going to get up to 50 points this year, Condre Miller, welcome to the team. I know we already have Adam Fox. They don't play in the same D pairing. They play in the different power plays. So I think that's a good option there. And then looking at what else we need, we definitely need a goalie, and we need we need some uh, defensemen. Or we need, a, we need a bench. So... Malkin's really crazy that he's still there, considering everything. I'm going to go with Tippett. I'm going to Owen Tippett, taking one of the shot on one of these wingers later on. I'm going to need a center here, but as everyone knows, fantasy hockey, there are so many centers that you can take at the end of the draft. Wingers is where it really gets a little bit more thin. Um, so let's see what other centers that we can scoop up. And then a goalie, a third goalie. You want to have a third goalie, you know, interchange those guys. A, guys I've been tar a guy I've been targeting late in rounds is Cam Talbot because I think he will be the starter in L.A. I feel like Tom McClellan will have more trust in him than Phoenix Copley. I know Phoenix Copley was on the team last year, but Cam Talbot's been in so, in so many different situations, a little bit more experience under his belt. Playing in front of that really solid decor, I think he'll have a pretty solid season and definitely get some wins in a shitty division. Someone went took a flyer, took Pat, Patrick Kane. Very interesting. Very interesting. So Kopitar is still there as well. Kopitar is going to be playing on that first line in LA with, you know, with Quinton Byfield and probably oh there he goes, he just got taken. See, God damn it. But Quinton Byfield and Adrian Kempe it seems like, who Adrian Kempe forty three goals it was last year. That's very solid. Elias Lindholm too. I think this Cal a lot of guys on this Calgary team are going to have much better seasons this year. So I'll probably look at that as uh, these last two picks are kind of coming up, or last few picks. Obviously, at this point, you're just trying to fill the holes that you missed out on. So um, let's take a look. Yeah, I think Lindholm is probably going to be my top option here, as long as he doesn't go. Yeah, there you go, Elias Lindholm. I'll take him. And why don't we get our last goalie? Yeah, let's go Cam Talbot. Honestly, Schmid and Kachekov, two guys you could take in this spot as well. Two guys that... Aren't solidified number ones by any means, but could be at some point in the season if you have them before um, that they're they're getting picked up. That's just even better situation for yourself. So um, now we can kind of take a flyer on someone that we think is going to have a good year. That's definitely a little bit further back down. Pavel Zaka, pretty good option if you need a center. You know, I, I don't really need a center right now. But another guy I'm going to be looking at, where is he? So far down. I did the same thing at the end of last draft. Here, I'll go with a different sleeper this time. Lucas Reichel. Love Lucas Reichel this year, playing alongside Connor Bedard. Could be, um, could have a, a breakout season this year. Maybe 40, 50 points. You know, he had 51 points in 53 games last season in the AHL. Obviously, the NHL is a much different speed, but at least he's going to be playing on that top line um, where he doesn't have to play with a bunch of bums. He'll be playing with Taylor Hall and Connor Bedard. And Connor Bedard apparently is pretty good, so that's from what I've heard, so... Or Lucas Raymond. You know, I'm going to go with Lucas Raymond. That's a much better option. I don't have any of the other pieces of that line, and I love that first line in Detroit. I think that's a better option, a little bit more secure. And there we go. Lucas Raymond, last pick here. And here's our team. Let's look at our team. So, as I mentioned, took a center in that one to four slot. That's more than likely going to happen. If you don't end up taking a center there, don't feel like you need to take a center in that second pick. Like Crosby and some other really solid centers will probably be there, but you still have Nylander. You still have Timo Meyer. Getting your wingers early is much easier, makes your life much easier later on in the draft. And then that third pick or second pick, whichever one it is, take a defenseman. And then fourth round, fifth round, you can either stack up defensemen or get another winger. And then make sure you're making you're taking a goalie in that fifth round. You know, someone like you say Saros, Philip Gustafson, uh, Sergei Bobrovsky is another option. Jeremy Swayman, if you think he's going to take over the net like I do as well. And then kind of keep pile driving from there, making sure you're filling all the needs that you do on that team. Just remember, centers will always be available later on in drafts as well. I got Elias Lindholm in one of the last rounds. It's first line center on that Calgary Flames team. So don't panic if you're not getting centers. Just make sure you're shoring up on wingers early and often. The next mock draft video that we'll do is for rounds five to eight. That'll be the next video coming out. So stay tuned to that. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know what you thought of this mock draft team.